Hi guys! Welcome back to my channel. This is Emily from Raven Relics, and today I wanted to do a little flip through for you of this Celtic Viking journal that I just finished like 60 seconds ago. I was planning on having it done probably like a week ago, but you know, life happens. Um, I've been so busy, so so busy, um, so this guy had to take a back seat for a few days, but I finally have it done, and I wanted to show you before I lose the lighting here. It is three o'clock in the afternoon, and it's snowing. We're supposed to get a pretty bad storm, so the lighting in here is kind of meh, but we will do our best. Uh, let's just get right into it. So let me grab my tape measure. So you can see when I let go of the cover, it's uh, pretty thick. I haven't had a chance to put it under weights yet, so it still kind of pops up like that a little bit. Um, but I personally love thick, chunky journals. But anyway, so this is just over six inches wide by nine inches long. The word in the book plate here is uh, Gaelic, so don't ask me how to pronounce it. I have no idea. I'm not even going to try. But this is the Scottish Gaelic word for ancient. So the fabric is just a basic cotton fabric. It has these, I don't know if you can see, like bear faces with the Celtic knotwork. This was technically a Viking style fabric, which is why I'm calling it a Viking Celtic journal. Um, so they kind of blend together well, though. Here's the back accented with pretty gold corner protectors on both the front and back. Here's the spine. <clears throat> All right, so let's just go right into it. I'm trying to have the camera be a little bit closer to the book so you can see more detail because the last few videos I've made the detail, I don't know, it just it's not like standing out the way I want to. Oh well. Okay, here we go. So, in this first pocket here, we've got a bunch of stuff going on. I'll just take it all out. Here are the beautiful, like, sage green end papers. And I made a pocket here out of a digital image of some trees. Everything's coffee dyed. And, oh, I forgot to mention, <laughs> as with all of my books, I use professional bookbinders board for the covers. So it's very strong, sturdy, and thick. I use archival grade adhesive um, throughout the book, and I use 100% Irish linen waxed thread for the binding. Okay, anyway. So in the pocket here, first we've just got this um, pretty journaling card that I made. Um, it's just got this cool knotwork design on the corner. I thought it was pretty, and all journaling cards and, you know, tags, envelopes, whatever, all of it has been edged with this uh, Tim Holtz Distress Ink so that it looks as ancient as I want it to. And then we have this beautiful old illustration. And I really wanted to make this book, as you can tell, be primarily nature themed. So this next image is a bunch of shrooms, again, coffee dyed and edged, everything. Here is a little tag I just made out of some paper that you'll see later on in the book. And on the back is a little adorable shield stamp. And on this side, we have my classic raven on a branch stamp. And then paper clipped down here with a gold gold paper clip. I love those paper clips. <clears throat> I just um, paper clipped down this little ticket. Let's see. There we go. You can see there's like a little image, a little scene on it. And I have several of these, not only tickets, but like shield shapes and banner shapes throughout the book <clears throat> with that same imagery, I guess. And then here is a coffee dyed en envelope with a Griffin stamp. All right. 
So I just put the ticket down like this and paper clip. All right. I did a lot more burning <laughs> than I've done in other books. Um, I, I basically just lit a couple of pages and let it go, let the flames go a little bit longer than I normally would because I'm with this book again, I'm trying to go for very rustic and nature-esque and very, very ancient. I'm practicing different ways of making my books look as old as physically possible without having them actually, you know, fall apart. Here is um, this you've seen before, an old kind of astrology chart. And then down here, it's kind of hard to hold this, we have a stamp, antlers coming out of a crown. Here's a big piece of parchment paper with two little Celtic knotwork stamps. I left it unglued so you can just fold it down and or if you wanted to you could glue the sides here and they could be pockets. Here's a little tuck spot I made out of a, a Celtic knotwork circle and here's the first of several um, images that I found online, just free images of various um, Celtic looking designs. I don't actually know what this is, but I thought it looked really cool. Some awesome speckly coffee stains on the back. There's lots of journaling cards in this book. So much space to write. Here is a tuck spot I made out of a banner, and that banner is um, the same kind of illustration as that ticket from the first page. And I tucked another Celtic illustration. There's that shield stamp down there again. And on this side, I made a side pocket out of some uh, map paper. And inside I put another coffee dyed envelope and a fantastical <laughs> dragon image. There's that griffin stamp, um, border stamp. Little Triscoll stamps. If you did not see my last video, um, <laughs> you may not know what a Triscoll is. A Triscoll is basically three spirals conjoined in the center. It is a very ancient um, Celtic symbol. I'll give you a close up there. That's a Triscoll. So I've got a few different um, types of Triscoll stamps. This is the most like authentic looking one. Um, this is how the original one looked. The original ones, I guess, plural. But there's all kinds of Triscoll variations, which you will see. Here's some cool coffee staining. I don't really know how that happened, but I thought it was cool. So I put this stamp opposite it. One of my favorites. You've seen it before. Griffin and a crown. Mossy green pocket, and I just glued this shield straight down to it. More of that pattern from the ticket and the banner. And inside we have another Celtic image turned journaling card. And then we have the first of a few book pages, <clears throat> book pages, sorry, that I put in here. Um, so these are book pages from a book that I just so happened to have laying around all about like mythical beasts and ancient myths and stuff. So there were some cool images in there. This is one of them, some sort of war scene and then descriptions of kind of like beasts and stuff on the back. This is a Nick the Booksmith um, letter that I printed out on coffee dyed paper. A little Celtic knotwork stamp. Another big burn spot. <laughs> Another little Triscoll stamp and an owl stamp up there. Oh yeah, and then I made a pocket out of this really cool illustration of a castle. 
This is one of three castle illustrations in this book. And then in the pocket, I just put a few different journaling cards. I think they're all just blank on the back. And over here, we have a chandelier stamp. Little baby Celtic knotwork stamp. Again, on the other side of that Nick the Booksmith letter. A big illuminated letter. I am obsessed with illuminated letters. I'm actually thinking about uh, getting back into sketching and drawing, which is something that I dabbled in a little bit at one point in my life. Um, I'm thinking about getting back into it just because I want to be able to draw my own illuminated letters and various things for my books. I think that'd be awesome. Here's that um, patterned paper that I made a tag out of and put in that first pocket in the cover. I just thought to myself when I saw this that it reminded me, <clears throat> reminded me of the night sky. And that reminded me about Vikings sailing at night and using the stars to guide them. I don't know how they actually did that, but that was the thinking behind me using this piece of patterned paper. And I just made a pocket out of the same paper. And inside of it, we have another scrap from that Mythical Beasts book. It's all grungied up. And on the reverse side is this lovely scene, lovely hunting scene. Um, and then I made a tag out of some map paper. And on the bottom, I tried out my cranberry colored ink pad for the first time, and it came out absolutely gloriously. So I was very happy about that. This book, by the way, has um, a base of 200 pages. All of my books have that base of 200 pages front and back. So a blank journal just has those 200 pages. A book like this that is just chock full of good things is probably at least 220 pages, at least. And then all the envelopes and journaling cards and stuff on top of that. There's that same stamp, but in the black ink. There's that chandelier stamp again. A little banner that I just made into a tuck spot. You could just leave it there as a decoration or tuck something under it. And then on the other side of that night sky-esque paper, I just glued straight down this Celtic um, border that kind of makes a pretty frame. So you could glue a picture down there, you could um, write something, whatever. But I just thought it looked pretty with that background. Here's another circular um, Celtic knotwork tuck spot. And I just put another one of those tickets under it. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. I don't know, they were kind of cool. They were pretty and they looked old and magical. So I wanted them. Anything old and magical is pretty much what I'm about. Ah, okay. Here is a big map that I made into some pockets. In this pocket, we have another book page from that mythical book. I have no idea what these are, some sort of ancient scary monsters or mermaids, I don't know. And then there's the back of the page. So I just sewed this map into the center of this particular signature and then put some glue down on these edges to make them pockets. And in this pocket, we have a couple Celtic-y, medieval-esque dudes. I think they're both, yeah, they're both blank on the back. I just love this guy's expression. <laughs> he looks very suspicious. So I wanted their eyes sticking out like that and I wanted him to be suspiciously looking at that guy. <laughs> Okay, anyway, beautiful speckly coffee stains. Hopefully the camera being closer will pick more of them up. Here's another one of those tickets that I just glued straight down for a little accent. And then we come to our bunny pocket, or our rabbit pocket. Just a pretty illustration of a bunny. And inside the pocket, we have this green piece of parchment paper, which came from 
uh, medieval mirage. And then I think this is our final piece of um, a book page from that mythical book. Just some information or descriptions about various mythical beasts. Lots of burning over here. Here's another tuck spot made out of a banner. Another random Celtic image. Tree of Life stamp down there. Little burn down there. And then ginormous burn <laughs> on that side. It was intentional, I promise. I just, I wanted to, again, start playing around with like really making it look as old as possible. And if it's truly hundreds and hundreds of years old, it's gonna have some grunge factor to it. Here are two opposing tree pockets. Um, I don't remember what kind of trees they are, but um, I think both of these and the rabbit, um, the rabbit pocket <laughs> that you just saw, as well as this initial um, pocket here, I believe they're all from old design shop. I'm gonna have to double check, but I'm pretty sure. Oh, here's another um, example of a Triscoll. So just another variation. And then this pocket, we have an old illustration, old children's book illustration, I believe. And then in this pocket, this is just a pretty journaling card. And then we have a green envelope with that raven again. Right. I think I might actually be able to film this video in one take. <laughs> I'm doing it. So far, so good. I'm trying to film in one take so that I have the good lighting. It's getting dark really fast. Oh, and it's snowing now. <laughs> I just looked out the window for the first time since I started filming this, and it's like it was not snowing before, and now it is absolutely like snowstorm level snowing. Okay, um, here, I just love this paper. I love it. It's so, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's not like childish, but it's just, I don't know. It's so fun and uh, well done. I don't know. I just love this patterned paper. The little sparkly fairy on the mushroom. And there's a lion's head stamp. Oh yes, here's the other side of that patterned paper. Here's another gold paper clip. And it is clipping this big piece of parchment paper down. It's just blank on the back. Coffee dyed, all the speckles. So this is just obviously some very old ancient looking manuscript that I just had to have. It's a digital download. I don't remember where it's from off the top of my head, but um, I can very easily find that out if you're interested, if you're curious. And then here we have a pocket made out of a griffin illustration, sleeping griffin. And inside that pocket, we've got another little coffee dyed envelope. I don't think there's a stamp in here. No. Coffee dyed envelope and another pretty nature e nature-esque journaling card. There's that raven stamp for the third and final time, I do believe. Little not work stamps. Oh, that's right. Um, another castle illustration that I turned into a pocket. And inside the pocket, just a couple journaling cards. I think this one is blank on the back. Just some old looking writing. And then I made this into a tag. And we've got that lion's head at the bottom. Uh, antlers coming out of a crown stamp. Here is a another giant burn spot. I think it looks cool. Hopefully you do too. Here is a sheet of coffee dyed vellum. There's that stamp again. And here is a big piece of parchment paper. This time I did, in fact, glue down the edges here. So these are pockets. So don't, don't try to pull that down. That'll be bad. <laughs> There's another little burn 
I snuck it in there. And inside of these pockets, I have another piece of parchment paper and this image of a very funky um, letter A. <laughs> it's supposed to be like uh, again, a funky take on an illuminated letter, or like a modern take on an illuminated letter. It's got the Celtic knotwork there. It's it's like very different. I've never seen anything quite like it. And I loved how the ink was just a little bit purple more than black. So there's that. Shield stamp. Other side of the vellum. Griffin stamp again, shield, just glued straight down, and you can see there's some kind of old looking writing on it. Here's another, I think this is the last castle illustration that I turned into a pocket. And inside the pocket, there is this uh, Celtic bird thing. <laughs> don't know what it is. I just look up Celtic illustrations and if I see something I like, I just print it out. And then we have another copy dyed envelope. This time it's mustard yellow, little Kel Celtic knotwork stamp at the bottom. Okay. We are almost done. Owl stamp. Here's a big old map that I uh, aged and weathered and crumpled up and it's just held down at the top by a paper clip and there's a gold knotwork charm attached to said paper clip so you can move this around do whatever you want clip more stuff to it whatever and then here's the back lovely stains there's my maker's mark down there and I decided to do something a little different with the nameplate. I usually just put it in the center of the back cover, but for whatever reason, I just feel like it looked, or I felt like it looked better in this corner down here. So this is a Nick the Booksmith um, uh, nameplate. It's so pretty, I love it. So anyway, there is the book. My goodness, okay. So, if the lighting stays decent for me, I might be able to get um, some good pictures taken of this and get it put up on my Etsy shop tonight. If not tonight, most definitely it will be in my Etsy shop sometime tomorrow. I will of course post that on my Instagram. Uh, let me think, let me think, what else, what else, what else? Oh, I've also been thinking about uh, investing in some sari silk. I know sari silk is very popular amongst journal makers or specifically junk journal makers. I've never used sari silk before, um, but I think it looks really, really pretty. And like something like this, I don't know if I had like the right color sari silk wrapped around this as a closure, a closure, sorry, <laughs> cannot talk. Um, I think it could just, it would look so nice and it would be that final perfect like cherry on top. So anyway, I'm going to be looking into some earth tone colored sari silk in the next couple days. <clears throat> and if I get some that matches this book really good and it hasn't sold yet, then I'll put some sari silk around this book. So anyway, I think that that is all for now. Um, all of my links will be in the description box down below. Please give this video a thumbs up if you so choose. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. I put out videos every single week. Um, so yeah, I think that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!